Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio from Boise, Idaho. This is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me. Box13 at greatdetectives.net. Uh, follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and, uh, be sure and fill out our listener survey, survey.greatdetectives.net. Uh, well, uh, before we do get started, today's episode is brought to you by the financial support of our listeners. Thanks so much. Uh, for your support, uh, we have a couple of articles coming up this Saturday at greatdetectives.net. Or this weekend, I should say. Saturday, uh, I have my review of uh, the Poirot TV film Murder in Mesopotamia. And uh, on Sunday, I'll have my review of uh, The Thin Man by Dashiell Hammett, the book. And also be sure to be watching on Sunday. We'll have our next video theater episode, which will be another uh, episode of Sherlock Holmes. All right, well, now it's time for today's uh, episode of the lineup. Um, not one of my favorite titles, but uh, I will uh, read it. It's the Murdering Mercer's Malingering Case, and it's from March 4th, 1952. By transcription, we take you now behind the scenes of a police headquarters in a great American city. For under the cold, glaring lights will pass before us the innocent, the vagrant, the thief, the murderer. This is the lineup. Hi, how's it going? Okay. Are you shopping? <laughs> Just looking. Dull upstairs. Yeah, it's dull every place. Only got 15 in the line tonight. Huh? Well, say, uh, here your kid brother passed his final exam. Yeah. You're going to be pestered with quine. Let's see. Who might he put in for? Motors. Oh, I think I'll grab a seat. Okay, I'll see you later. May I have your attention, please? You people on the other side of the wire in the audience room, may I have your attention, please? Thank you. My name is Carter. Sergeant Pete Carter. I'll explain the lineup to you. Each of the suspects you'll see will be numbered. I'll call off a number, their name and charge. If you have any questions or identifications, please remember the number assigned to the prisoner to the call his name. If you're sure or not too sure of the suspect, have him held. Questions I ask these suspects are merely to get a natural tone of voice, so do not pay too much attention to their answers, as they often lie. All right, bring on the line. All right, boys, move it to the end of the stage. Now, turn it face front. Hands at your sides. Now, when I call your number, step out, look straight ahead, and talk up. Talk up loud enough so the people in the back of the room can hear you. Okay, number one, Harry Connors, robbery. Where do you live, Harry? 6514 Maryland Avenue, South. Where do you work? I don't. What was your last job? Uh, Stevedore. What? I was a Stevedore, Stevedore. Who did you work for? Uh, Black Star Shipping Company. How long ago was that? Oh, about two months ago. Louder, Harry. How long? Two months. Two months. Why'd you quit? Well, I had to. Why? Oh, bad back. Quit my back. Any weapons when you were arrested? Yeah, I had an automatic. What kind? The Army 45. Who does it belong to? Hey, the Army. I guess the Army. Okay, step back. Number two, Peter Sanchez. Assault. Where do you live, Pete? Me and my wife and kids. Where? Delaware Avenue. What number? Uh, 618 North. Why'd you hit him? Well, he's still my kid. I can hit him for a while. Answer the questions, Pete. Why'd you hit him? Cause it's not good. What'd you hit him with? My arm. What'd you have in your hand? A palm. Where'd you get it? From his mother. What was she doing with it? Well, she was going to hit him, too. Any other arrest, Pete? Yes, sir. What for? We're well, hitting his mother. <laughs> Lose your temper pretty easy, don't you, Pete? Well, only when I get mad. Okay, step back. 
Number three, George Donnan, drunk and disorderly. Step out. Where do you live, George? A427 West to Highland yeah. 6th Street. Where yeah. do you work? Oh. I work for myself. Right, I'm sorry. Can I talk to you? Yes. Yeah, what kind of work? A plumbing contract. Where were you arrested? I don't remember. What do you remember? Yeah, what's up? Just got a call from Jones's pawn shop. There's a kid down there trying to pawn a $5,000 necklace. How old a kid? Jones says he can't be more than 10. Jones said it would be open. Okay. Hello? You are the police? Uh, I'm Lieutenant Guthrie. This is Sergeant Asher. Where's the kid? That's him out there playing the piano. Hmm. Uh, does he suspect anything? I don't think so. I told him I would have to wait for my wife before I could give him any money. He seemed to believe me. Hmm. He looks like a nice kid. Seems nice. But the necklace... You have it on you? Here. These are all perfect diamonds. The center one weighs one and three-quarter carats. That's 2,000 right there. Hmm. You stay here, Mr. Jones. Come on, Ashen. Let's have a talk with the boy. Right. Hi. What's your name? Bobby. What's yours? Ben. What are you doing here, Bobby? Waiting for Mrs. Jones to come in so I can get my money. Your money? What for? I sold Mr. Jones a necklace. Where'd you get the necklace? Why do you want to know? Bobby, I'm Lieutenant Guthrie. This is Sergeant Asher. We're policemen. I didn't do anything. Bobby, where did you get the necklace? I found it at home. Why? Do you know who it belongs to? Yes, sir. It belongs to my mother. Does your mother know you have it? No, but she wouldn't mind if she did. Is your mother home now? No, I don't know where she is. Uh, what's your last name, Bobby? Mercer. Where do you live? 2116 Stamper Avenue. Do you have a phone there? Yeah, Park 90874. Asher, call his folks and let them know where he is and what happened to the necklace. There's nobody home. Only my little brother and he's too small to answer the phone. Well, give it a try anyway, Dave. Right. You ever taken anything from your mother before? Oh, no, sir. I wouldn't have taken Mom's necklace away. I know I could get some money for it. Do you know how much the necklace is worth? Five dollars. Tell me, Bobby, uh, what do you want a lot of money for? I just want to get some food for me and Danny. That's your brother? Uh-huh. Mom wouldn't mind. She wouldn't? Mom wouldn't want us to have enough money to get something to eat. That's all you wanted the money for? Well, sure. Nobody home. Do you know where your mother and father are? No, sir. Maybe they're out looking for you in the necklace. Well, they're not looking for me. I'm looking for them. What do you mean, son? I haven't seen Mom or Dad for a long time. Well, is there someone watching after you while they're gone? No, Danny and you are all alone. He's been crying because he's hungry. You mean that your folks just up and left you two kids to just take care of yourselves? I guess so. We got up one morning and they're both gone. Well, how long ago was that? We all went to the movies last Saturday. That was the last time I saw them. They didn't leave you any money to buy food with? No, sir. I guess they had to stay away longer than we expected. That's why I don't think Mom would mind if I sold her necklace. Uh, where does your father work, Bobby? He sells used cars at Opportunity Corner downtown. Asher, got to check on the father. See if he's been around the car lot in the last week. Mm -hmm. Do I have a gun? Sure. Big one. Ever shoot anybody? What's your father's full name? Uh, same as mine. Bobby, I mean, uh, Robert Mercer. Is your brother all right at home alone? I don't know. I didn't want to leave him, but he was crying. I wanted to get something for him to eat. When was the last time you had anything to eat? Yesterday morning. We had a candy bar. Now, where did you get it? Well, that's all right. It wasn't like stealing. Danny was hungry and so was I. Come on, Bobby. Let's go over to your house, but huh? What about Mom's necklace? I sold it to Mr. Jones. Well, wouldn't you rather find your mother and father? Are you going to find them for me? I'll well, sure try. <laughs> Uh, 
Coffee in here. And open a couple of windows. Yeah. And where's Danny? Up here. Well, let's go up and see him, huh? Sure. He must be asleep in trying. How many days have your folks been gone? Three, I think. Oh, I got a stomach. Nah, we'll get you something to eat as soon as we see Danny. In here. I guess he's asleep. Where's your phone, Bobby? Downstairs, by the stairs. I took a look around downstairs. Now call an ambulance. Is something wrong with Danny? Yeah, he's sick, Bobby. Oh, maybe it would be better if we got him right into the car. Yeah, it might be a good idea. We'll wrap that blanket around him. Oh, gosh, I guess it was my fault. You go along with Sergeant Asher, Bobby. Come on, Bobby. Well, where are we going? Well, to take care of Danny and get you something to eat. Well, what if Mom comes back if she doesn't find us? Well, I'm going to stay here, Bobby. I'll tell her where you are if she comes back. Come on, Bobby, we've got to hurry. Okay. I'll check with the neighbors. Right. I'll call and tell them you're coming. Okay, then. Sure, Bobby, sure. Emergency hospital, please. Hi. Ash, you get to the hospital yet? Yeah. The little boy's pretty sick. Uh, I've been checking with the neighbors. You two go on in and see what you can turn up in the house. You know, there's got to be something wrong. Parents wouldn't go off and leave two kids to starve. Oh, well, I can't find out much. None of the neighbors seem to know anything about it. I'm going to check that house now. I called where the father works. Opportunity corner? Yeah. He hasn't been to work in three days. Well, uh, let's see what we can find in the house. And there's no car in the garage. I've got traffic checking that now. I'm going across the street. Okay. Sorry to bother you. I'm a police officer. Yeah, I've been watching you going around to the other houses. Something wrong at the Mercer's? Uh, we're, we're checking on them. They seemed to disappear three days ago and left the children alone. Left those two little kids? That's right. I didn't know the kids were alone. I, I've seen the oldest one going out of the house now and then, but I had no idea that the family wasn't there. Uh, do you know the Mercer's very well? Uh, no. They just moved in about a month ago. Do you think something's happened? Well, we don't know. Both the kids are hungry. The little one's pretty sick. Gosh, if I'd known... Now, what I... kind of people were the Mercers? Well, like I said, I didn't know them very well. It seemed like nice folks, I guess. Well, what kind of a car did they drive? A kid. It was a sedan, black one. I think he's in the used car business. They ever have any arguments? Yeah, they had a couple of good ones. Well, who doesn't? And when was the last? Gosh, I don't know. Did you see them leave the house three days ago? Three days ago? Yeah, Saturday. No, I don't think so. They took the kids to a show. Well, maybe my wife did. Oh, well, where's your wife? Having her hair done. Crazy deans get all their hair cut off. Now, I'll call her if No, you... no, that's all right. I'll check with her later. Did you find anything in the house? Not yet. I hope nothing's happened to them. Well, uh, thank you, Mr... Uh, the Bishop. Stan Bishop. I work at the Fidelity Insurance Company on Spring... Stayed home to figure out my income tax. Playing a little hooky. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Bishop. I'll stop by later to talk to your wife. Yeah, sure. I'll tell her. Sam? Yeah? We were working in the basement. Yeah? There's a woman's body in the laundry bin. Officer said you found Mrs. Oh. 
Is that Mrs. Mercer? Yeah. Yeah, that's Mrs. Mercer. How would we think she's been strangled? Oh. Who did it? We don't know yet. Her husband? We don't know yet. Do I have to stick around? No, no. Thank you for the identification. Sure. Well, you may want to talk to you again. Sure. Now she's on his way over. The lab boys in the car should be here, too. Hello. Oh, hello. They're downstairs in the basement. Sounds like Asher now. Yeah, yeah. I know. Uh, who are you? I'm a neighbor. Asher? Yeah, coming right down, Ben. The lab boys are right behind me. Should be here in about five minutes. Oh, well, that's nice. The neighbor just identified her. Strangled? Looks like it. And I took Bobby over to the juvenile authorities. What about the younger one? He's going to be all right, but it's lucky we found him when we did. Oh, I checked at the used car lot. Mercer was part owner. Made pretty good money. Mm-hmm. Well, that counts for the expensive necklace. Mm-hmm. Boys on the lot say they haven't heard from him in three days. What about his car? Oh, well, it's a black Cadillac sedan, 1950 Series 62. You got a license number? Mm-hmm. 77J8843. It's one of the cars from the lot. I put out an APB for Mercer in the car. Uh, come on, Pete. Where are we going? I want to talk to Bobby Mercer again. What are you going to say to him? I don't know. What do you say to a kid whose mother's been killed? Hi. Hello, Bobby. Is your office? Sure is, Bobby. Uh, shut the door, Pete. Come on in. Well, I have to go down the... Come on in. Okay. Don't you want to come in, Pete? Sure, Bobby, sure. Well, how do you feel? I feel good. Well, Danny's going to be fine. He was just uh, a little sick. Where's Mom and Dad? Did they come home? Well, we, uh, we can't find your father. Oh, but you found Mom. Did she come home? Why didn't she come see me? Can I go home? Uh, Bobby, uh, look. How'd you, uh, how'd you like a candy bar, Bobby? Okay. Where's Mom? Uh, Bobby, uh, do you have any idea where we might find your father? No, but why don't you ask Mom? She'd know. Well, uh, she didn't know, Bobby. Is he lost or something? Yeah. Yeah, something like that. You know, that I'd like to be a policeman when I get grown up. Bobby. Uh, yeah? Bobby, you, you you can't go home right away. Why not? Well, you, your mother, she's... Uh... What's wrong with Mom? Pete. Okay. Is something wrong with Mom? You, you see, Bobby, sometimes things happen. What's happened to Mom? She's sick? No, 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 she's not sick. Uh, uh, wait a minute. Oh, I'm sorry. No, 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 no. Come on in. I got the lab report. Hey, Bobby, you're a big boy. I wasn't half as big when I was your age. I want to see Mom. You're... Your mother's had an accident, Bobby. Bobby, listen. Oh, no, no. Come on, Bobby. You've got to be a big fella and take Let me this. go. I want to Wait. Oh, I can't do it. Your mother's... Your mother's dead, Bobby. Oh, no. Quiet. No. Quiet. You better take him back. Sure. Come on, Bobby. No, no, let me go. I want my mother. Come on, Bobby. No, please, please. You better pick him up. No. Up you go. No, please let me go, please. I want my mother. death on the radio. I'd, I'd like to talk to you about it. I know Mr. Mercer. Can you come out here? Of course, Miss Lake. What's your address? 752 West Palm. 752 West Palm. That's in Forest Park? Yes, that's right. At the end of Palm. Thank you, Miss Lake. I'll be right out. Yes. 
I'm Lieutenant Guthrie. Oh, come in. Thank you. This is Sergeant Cargan. How do you do? Hello. Sit down. Oh, thanks. Thanks. Are you the one I talked to? Yes, ma'am. Well, I don't know quite how to start. You said you heard a news broadcast about Robert Mercer. Well, yes. You know Robert Mercer? Yes. Yes, I know him. Well, you wanted to tell us something about him. I didn't know he was married. You didn't? I didn't know he had a wife and two kids. Well, we'd like to question him, if you can help at all. I met him about three months ago. He sold me a car. I see. I didn't know he was married because he didn't say anything about it. He never said anything about it. Well, we understand that. I saw him quite a bit, maybe a couple of times a week. A couple of times a week for three months? Yeah, well, maybe not always a couple of times a week, but... Well, you know. What did you want to tell us about the Mercer murder? Well, he came back here three days ago. Saturday. Uh, Saturday? Uh, yeah, it was Saturday. That was the day his wife was killed. He wanted me to go away with him. He said he was going out of town. He wanted me to go with him. Why didn't you? Well, the way he was acting. He, he was acting kind of funny, strange. He was real nervous. What did he say to you? Just that he wanted me to go away with him, that... He had to leave town on business and that he wanted me to come along. Just because he was acting funny wasn't the only reason I didn't go with him. It wouldn't look right. I told him it wouldn't, you understand? Yes, ma'am. Did he say where he was going? Just out of town. I wouldn't have gone with him even if he'd been acting all right, you understand. No. Yeah. He used to go up to a cabin sometimes on the weekend. I, I thought maybe that was where he was going. A cabin? Yeah, the cabins at Horseshoe Lake. And you know he's been up there before? Oh, Yeah. Just where is this cabin? Horseshoe Lake. Or what part? What's the location? Well, I'm not sure. It's off the highway. I remember there's a general store just before... That's all right. I really didn't know he had a wife and kids. If I'd have known... Oh, we understand. If you go to the general store, they can tell you where the cabin is. Does Mr. Mercer own the cabin? No, he rents it. I doubt if he'd be there. With his name on all the newscasts. Oh, he uses another name when he rents the ca- uh, What name, Miss Lake? Smith. Robert Smith. If he's up there, you won't tell him I told... No, we won't tell him. You understand? Yeah. We understand. Good afternoon. Afternoon. All right, hello. What can you do, sir? Uh, we're looking for a man named Robert Smith. Yeah? Is he in his cabin? Well, I couldn't say. Well, we were told you could tell us where to find him. Yeah, I'd tell you where to find the cabin, but if he ain't in it, <laughs> I can't help him. Uh, we're police officers. Uh-huh. Is Mr. Mer- uh, Smith living in the cabin? Well, he has been. For how long? What you want him for? We'd like to talk to him. Ah, oh, come on. What you want him for? What's he done? We didn't say he'd done anything. Oh, now, you don't have to play cagey with me. You fellows are from the city, ain't you? That's right. Well, now, I sure don't figure that city cops would come all the way up here just to talk. Now, what'd you say your name was? I didn't. Sam Fisher. Mr. Fisher, it's getting dark. We'd like to find Robert Smith before it gets any darker. Might have a hard time shooting if it gets too dark, huh? We're not planning on shooting anybody, Mr. Fisher. Oh, no, for land's sake. You two fellas are treating me like I don't know nothing at all. Mr. Fisher, how long has Robert Smith been living in the cabin? Since Saturday. I rented it to him Saturday. This isn't the first time he's rented it. He's been up lots of times in the past couple of months. He started coming up around, let me see, last January. When was the last time you saw him? Uh, about four this afternoon. He come in to buy some groceries and things. And he's been up here since Saturday? Mm-hmm. Saturday night, to be exact. Got me out of bed around 11. Uh, oh, now, come on, fellas. What's it all about, eh? Uh, what do you want him for? Huh? Where's the cabin, Mr. Fisher? Oh, you fellas. Well, it's up the road about three miles. You come to a turn-off that has a sign. Paradise Villa. That's it. Up the road. Mm, about three miles, about that. Turn right. Paradise Villa. That's right. That's the name of his cabin. Ain't nothing like a villa, but that young fella I hired to paint the signs, <laughs> he got real fancy. Well, thank you, Mr. Fisher. <laughs> you don't want to tell me what this is all about? Sorry, Mr. Fisher, we can't. Oh, say, look, uh, fellas. Yes, Mr. Fisher? We're in a hurry, Mr. Fisher. I didn't know as how I ought to tell you this before. Or not. But seeing as how you just want to talk to Smith. Tell us what, Mr. Fisher? 
Well, when Smith was in to buy the groceries, he bought himself a box of 30-30s. I guess he must have a rifle. I guess he must. Thanks, Mr. Fisher. You know, I still can't believe it. What? That a guy'd kill his wife and leave two children to starve. It looks like this guy did. Oh, here's a sign. Yeah, that's it. Paradise Villa. Want to drive right up to the house? No, we'll walk up and take it easy. Mm. Yeah, it's snow, and I wouldn't be a bit surprised. Uh, it's funny how you miss street lights. Yeah. I can't see two feet. Yeah, there's a light. Well, how do we take it? Well, there's probably a back door. You find it and cover it. I'll just knock at the front. So there's a car. Black cab. Uh, okay, go ahead. I'll give you about 30 seconds. Good luck. Anybody out there? Anybody out there? Put down the rifle, Mr. Mercer. Who are you? Police. Put down the rifle. I thought I heard somebody out there. I better come inside. Wait. Someone else? My partner. I wondered how long it would take you to find me. Jimmy, tell you? This is my partner, Sergeant Cargan. You better both come in. Too cold to stand out here. Get the rifle, Pete. Sure. Come on in. You'll have to come back to town with us. I heard the news broadcast this afternoon, but I didn't think you'd be up here this soon. I was thinking last night about going down and turning myself in. Did you kill your wife, Mr. Mercer? Yeah. Don't ask me why. I killed her, and I guess I had a lot of reasons, but I can't seem to think of any good ones right now. We better go. The broadcast said the children were all right. Yeah, they're all right now. Huh? I'm not their real father, you know. I married Lucille. Oh, what difference does it make? That much. I don't know. Maybe you do. Why does a man kill somebody? I guess it depends. Yeah, I guess it does. <laughs> Lineup, where before you pass the innocent, the vagrant, the thief, the murderer. Listen again next week when we again bring you the lineup. May I have your attention, please? You people out there on the other side of the wire in the audience room, may I have your attention, please? Thank you. My name is Cogger, Sergeant Pete Cogger. I'll explain the lineup to you. Each of the suspects you'll see will be numbered. I'll call off a number, their name, and charge. If you have any questions or identifications, please remember the number of the Welcome back. Well, there's so much that went on in this uh, episode. Um, there were a few things. Uh, as it started out, it really had the, the feel of a Dragnet episode. And I had in mind the program The Big Children. And I thought the neighbor was kind of, you know, in this case, um, was kind of a, an attempt to be Dragnet-like that didn't work when he was talking about, uh, you know, like uh, p- playing a hooky to do his taxes and, you know, in a sort of uh, guilty, sheepish way, you know, it's like if Payne, uh, hooky to uh, do his taxes, oh, you mad, impetuous fool. But then I think it took a different shape with the murder element and the way it played out. And there were so many ways in the story. I, uh, um, a couple things that stood out was just how much, um, when you're a police officer, giving people uh, often just, uh, really horrible news. 
Um, and dealing with the kid, you know, it was just, I think, a very human moment for the police and, you know, this reflection by, uh, uh, you know, by the sergeant. Why are we doing this? You know, it's it just felt really real and human. I also, uh, thought the, uh, uh, woman in the story who was trying to minimize her relationship and maintain her, uh, reputation, but kind of torn with her conscience. Uh, the end didn't do a whole lot, uh, for me. And this was, I think, one of those episodes where they have, um, an ending line where the punchline just really doesn't do a whole lot. Um, so. But overall, I thought it was a good episode. Uh, a lot of thoughts, so. Um, uh, alright, well, uh, now we do turn to listener comments and, uh, feedback. Laura emails in, I have two questions today. Are the two most recent uh, podcast of the lineup different from the ones we heard in March, the Holstetter and Elsner case. I do listen to your commentary, but though I know these are among the last with the Matt Greb character, the stories seem the same, uh, from me. Um, that's a good question. The information I received from the Digital Deli, um, was that these are, um, re- uh, were rebroadcast, um, Programs. He said probable rebroadcast. So they could be, or, uh, then again, um, uh, maybe not, but, uh, probably, uh, rebroadcast, uh, programs. And, uh, probably earlier on the podcast, you know, when I first started hosting, I would have skipped them. Um, but I kind of see some merit in doing it in, um, you know, if, it, if they've got a rebroadcast in the schedule, just going ahead and, uh, doing it, you know, doesn't do, doesn't do any, um, any harm. And actually that, uh, that's the only email I've received on that. Uh, the lineup did tend to do a lot of repeats, um, just in that, uh, first, uh, season, um, uh, the 50, uh, 1950 and 51 episodes. Uh, as I look through the episode logs, I don't really see those with the 1952, 53 shows. So, uh, that won't be something we'll have a whole lot of in the future. Um, then we also had a comment on the app from uh, Big River 3, uh, over in the iTunes store. Uh, can't believe how much content, care, and work goes into the app and related podcasts. Well, thank you so much. And that will actually conclude our program for this week. We will be back on uh, Monday with yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Of course, on Sunday, we'll have a uh, TV episode of Sherlock Holmes for those of you who uh, use the video theater. And then join us back here next Saturday when we'll bring on the line for... Uh, uh, send your comments to box13, greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash radiodetectives. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.